In the previous two videos, I defined the function arcsine, I explained how to compute with it, and I found its derivative. In this video, we will do the same thing for the functions arctangent and arc cosine. I assume you have watched the previous videos already, so this time I will go faster. First, let's remember what we learned about arcsine. The function sine is not one-to-one, -one, so it does not have an inverse. We can restrict it to a smaller domain to make it one-to-one. -one. We keep only the function represented by this piece of the graph in red. And then it is one-to-one. -one. We define arcsine as its inverse, as the inverse of the restriction of sine to the interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2, inclusive. This is the graph of the restriction of sine in blue. And in red we have the graph of its inverse, arcsine. These are the two graphs together. We can also summarize that the functions are inverses of each other with the following statement. x equals arcsine of y, if and only if, y equals sine of x. As long as x and y are in the right intervals. This is for all x between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, inclusive, and for all y between minus 1 and 1, inclusive. If this went too fast, I invite you to watch the previous two videos. Ok then, let's try to do the same thing for tangent. Here is the graph of tangent. Notice that the domain is not all the reals. Tangent is not defined at any odd multiple of pi over 2. Like sine, tangent is not one to one, and it does not have an inverse. Like we did for sine, we can reduce the domain to make it one to one. It is a standard to consider the function defined by just this piece of the graph, in red. Then it is one to one, and we call its inverse arctangent. This is to say, we define arctangent as the inverse of the restriction of tangent to the open interval minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. By contrast, remember that we use the closed interval to define arcsine. Here is the graph in blue of the restriction of tangent. And here is the graph in red of its inverse, arctangent. Here is both of them together. Since they are inverses of each other, we can obtain one by reflecting the other with respect to the diagonal of the first and third quadrants. And just like we could summarize everything we needed to know about arcsine by this statement, we can do the same thing for arctangent. We can write that x equals arctangent of y, if and only if, y equals tangent of x. But this time, the intervals are different. This equivalence is for all x between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, not including the endpoints, and for all real numbers y. We have one more function to go. Let's look at cosine. Here is the graph. Like the other trig functions, cosine is not 1 to 1, but we can restrict the domain to make it 1 to 1. In this case, we cannot pick a domain symmetric around 0. It is customary to restrict cosine to the function defined by this piece of the graph in red. And we will call the inverse of this restriction arc cosine. By now you should be having a feeling of deja vu, so perhaps you can do the rest? Can you define arc cosine? Can you sketch its graph? And can you write the corresponding statement like the ones I wrote for arcsine and arctangent. To conclude the video, let's look at derivatives. In the previous video I already found the derivative of arcsine. If you imitate the exact same derivation, you will obtain that arc cosine has the same derivative as arcsine, but with an additional minus sign. Notice that the plus for arcsine and the minus for arccosine are due to the specific choices of restrictions we made. If you choose a different restriction of sine or cosine, you may get a different result. And finally, the derivative of arctangent of x with respect to x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. I recommend memorizing at least the derivatives of arcsine and arctangent. They appear often in many situations, and they are helpful. 
For example, they are useful when computing integrals. Perhaps you're wondering, what about the other trig functions? What about arcsecant, arccosecant, and arccotangent? We could define them in a similar way. However, in practice, these last three functions are rarely used. For most practical purposes, arcsine, arccosine, and arctangent are everything we need, so I won't say anything else about them.